Nice to see you all. Hi, my name is Omar Mosin. I work for the United Nations Office of Information Communication Technology, also for the UN Special Envoy on Technology. Very happy to be here today to talk to you about a topic that is really very close to our heart, the topic that we, 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 we believe has the potential to really change the work we do as, as a global community. So he, this is about open source and sustainable development goals. So I want to start with a story that goes back to the beginning of the millennium. This is, I don't know if you've ever seen those, called the Millennium Development Goals. So in the year 2000, while we're entering a new millennium, at the time Secretary General of the UN, Kofi Annan, created those eight goals saying, for us as humanity, going through a new millennium, these are the eight goals we have to all put all our collective effort together. So these are some really bold, big uh, uh, objectives like achieve universal education, reduce child mortality, and so on. But the coolest thing about the MDGs, they, these were not open-ended. They were just there for 15 years. And they said, after 15 years, let's measure, let's see how we're done. And after, in 2015, three of these goals were achieved. For instance, the first one, like half the world population went out of poverty. 91% uh, uh, of children in, in, in global developing uh, regions managed, were, had access to, to school. So given the big success they had, governments, all of our governments, all our countries came together to the UN and decided to take that and then scale it up to 17 goals. So some of the areas were forgotten. Uh, at, they were not at, in the original goals, so now climate got several objectives, like 13, 14, 15, and then, and again, the same idea of these are there for 15 years. Now, if you're wondering why am I talking about sustainable development goals in an open source conference, is that if, if you look at every one of these goals, cannot be achieved without technology. And actually, member states, when they created that, they said that technology is the main mean of implementations uh, for each of them. And, and for us, we believe beyond technology, open source is the main mean of technology, because all of us, everybody here, can be an actor for change. And back here to the quote from Secretary General, who said that we need to create a million digital champions for SDGs. Why? Because None of these goals could be achieved by one country, by one organization, by one, by, 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 uh, uh, when we say the, the, we the people of the UN is not the staff, is not government, it's really a collective we. And this is the power of the open source community. This is why we want help from all of you. And why for us open source is important is this barrier. There's, it breaks all the barrier. This is the real way of building a global community. There's transparency, security, it's innovation. It's also the concept of building communities that is really at the heart of, of what we do. So this is why for us open source is the main way of bringing this collective smartness, bright knowledge, global knowledge into those 17 goals. But to get there, us as UN, we wanted to, we had to be able to adopt open source and build what is taken that we actually get to be able at, at working with open source. So we came up with the UN open source strategy. As you can see, it's based on three pillars. So first is policy. It's not in the DNA of public organizations to be, to be open. It's actually the opposite in our DNA is to be closed. We were closed like all public administration for many years. So we had to do a lot of work on changing the culture. We had to do a lot of work on building policies. So then we make sure that it's done in a safe way. And, and, and really for us, this is the main quote is, we try to go beyond the open source and then push the organization into being to this open culture. And that by default is open, not uh, uh, that the, the open source is not an, an afterthought at the start of what we do. So here we started with, they're just giving a couple of example of initiative we had launched. So this is something very close to our hearts it's called Mind the Open Source Gap. So we started sending emails to the whole UN, say, hey, we have this lecture, who wants to come? And we thought we we're gonna have 20, 30 people. We had 400 the first time. 
And then this number of speakers, start, the number of people attending these lectures start get, gray, growing more and more. Now we passed the 600, so we had really awesome speaker. I don't, I don't know, raise your hand here if you ever spoke at Mind the Gap. Arun. So we had really all these amazing uh, organizations come and teach us, share with us, have discussion with us about how open source worked for them. Another thing we did is a community of practice. So we started this group internally. We didn't promote it and say, hey, everybody, anybody who likes open source, there's this community, come in. And we didn't promote it, and now we have over 500 people who come to it. And then we started doing a mailing list uh, of magazines every two weeks about, about, about important things we want them to know. We started to have this member community call once a month. We have a meeting and then one of the department come and ex exchange, show how they used open source and a successful way of using open source. Another thing we did that we're very proud of is called Open Source Software for SDG. This is a hackathon. We take a, it's a co-join with the European Commission where we take an SDG and we put challenges. We say, hey world, come help us. These are real life problems. So we leave this open for a month, month and a half. Big success. We're very happy with what's happening. Another thing there is Reboot the Earth. So this is a set of on-site hackathon and virtual hackathon focusing on climate change. If you think climate change is not important to fight, just, just I, I don't know if you were here on Friday, Saturday in Vienna, you could see the effect of climate change. So here is very successful where we managed to get this massive group of people around the world to hack for, for climate. And then another thing I want to talk about is that we realized that we cannot talk about open source and not apply it to yourself. So we realized that there's a group of UN agencies who are all going like us through the same thing. So what we did is that we decided that we're gonna split the work among us instead of one person, one agency trying to fight or design some big things. So let's do it together. So we designed those five tracks. So these are five projects and if you could see down, there's the name of the, each agency decided to lead on some of these. So the first one, we're building this big software catalog of all our open source software that we're providing to the world. This is led by UNFPA. We have another track about policy framework led by ITU, by David. You're here, David? David is right here, he's our policy expert. The third one about license is led by the World Health Organization. I don't know, Cassie, if you're around. And, and so on. So we decided that whatever we need to do, the whole costing platform, an important one, we're trying to build our repository for all the software that we're providing for the world. So this is big projects that there's no point of each one of us doing it on its own, that we decided that we as UN system, through this community of practice, that we all gonna work on these big things together. And one of us is going to dedicate his time and effort and expertise into leading in one of these. So this is fantastic first big, first building a community among, among, among the agencies. Another thing I want to talk about, we did at the start, we did this, it's a, pro, it's a publications where we try to see where we all at in terms of open source adoption. We send a survey and we wrote this big document to understand some of us obviously were more ahead, some were behind. So this was a way for us to actually understand what's happening in the landscape. Uh, another thing I want to talk about quickly here, this is our one-stop shop. It's going to be under opensource.un.org. Please don't Google it now. It's, it's going to be up around November. So here's going to be that one platform, UN portal, open source portal, where we're going to put a link to all our projects, all the Tool, not only for, from the United Nations, but also from the agencies, UNDP, UNICEF, and so on. So all of us, all the projects that we want help from the open source community will be available here. And here you'll get all the info about all the events, all the initiatives. So this is going to be our one-stop shop for the world. So this is something also we're working on. And now I want to quickly move to OSPO for good. This was our, as Gabe mentioned, our big uh, uh, conference that we organized in July. I don't know who, who attended OSPO for Good this year. Wow, pretty cool number. Thanks, you guys. So here, really, the goal is to use the convening power of the UN. We have this 
We, we are, we, our brand brings trust. We are the UN. We're not for profit. We're not politically motivated. We're really here to manage to bring the whole world. So we want to use that convening power for the open source planet. So here we brought, we had the big representations from around the world. There's a, a panel today at 11.55 where we're going to talk about that, talk also about the, the re conference report that we're going to be releasing very soon. So make sure to, to attend. And please make sure to check out OSPO for Good. It's going to be a yearly one. So we've already now started the planning for the 2025 one. And then last, I want to talk about something that we did uh, last year. Arun is the brain behind Cloud Native Hack. So we were in KubeCon, Paris, and then we organized this hackathon with, with the help of, 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 of Arun and others, where we put challenges and we said, hey, conference attendees, come help us. And we were very surprised to have people who flew from all the way from South, as far as South Korea and, 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 and New York and Poland came from all over, not for the, conference, for the hackathon. And it was an amazing way to get those incredible solutions in two days that we would have never gotten as, as UN. So now, happy to announce that this will be scaled up to become an initiative called Hack for SDG. And we're having also this afternoon a meeting trying to get a number of partners who wants to be in this journey with us. So last one here, this is just a bunch of, 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 of logos, but it's really to say that we know that we cannot do it alone. When you think of sustainable development goals, millennium development, these are big problems that we can only achieve if we come together. And open source is that language that we can all speak, that can actually bring the people together. So thank you very much. And uh, over to you, Gabe. <laughs>